Hello, my name is Frank Stajano and I teach here at the University of Cambridge. I invent things in the field of computer security and I feel I have to apologize to you guys. It's because of security geeks like me that you have to wrestle with all these passwords and passphrases and pins every time you go near a computer. Unfortunately, and you know this very well, uh, for normal human beings, passwords really are a disaster. Maybe they were okay when you only had to remember one, but now, nowadays you have to remember dozens of them, and the annoying security people like me tell you they have to be all different. Great. And they cannot be anything that people can guess, so you cannot use names or you cannot use dictionary words, and uh, you have to have uh, upper and lower case and numbers and various uh, magic symbols and so on and good luck typing that stuff on a smartphone uh, and you have to type the password with 100% accuracy even though all you see is asterisks and then you're not allowed to write the password down uh, but uh, to make it all even more ridiculous you have to change it every two months. In fact, it's absolutely impossible to follow all these rules at once. Even the arrogant security people who invent them are not capable of following them all at the same time. Uh, but if you don't follow them all, and then your account gets broken into, they will be blaming you for not following that advice. So passwords are rather bad from a usability perspective. However, they're also terrible from a security perspective, because they can be guessed, they can be brute force, they can be shoulder surf, they can be keylogged, they can be eavesdropped, they can be fished, they can be leaked at the very far, and in fact we have a whole vocabulary for the ways the passwords can be compromised. To me, passwords as the universal authenticator are a big mistake. They're essentially an unfair deal that we security people have imposed on regular human beings. And so I want to get rid of passwords completely. I want to replace them with a system that will be more usable, more secure, and won't require you to have to memorize any secrets at all. It's based on a device called Pico, a small handheld gadget that might look like a key fob, a watch, or maybe a small MP3 player. Officially, the Pico is named after Pico della Mirandola, an Italian Renaissance philosopher known for his fantastic memory. But actually, I was thinking more of his Disney namesake, Il Professor Pico de Papyrus. The Pico device can remember thousands of login credentials and present the right one on your behalf, saving you from having to type a password. You use your Pico to scan the code of the service you're accessing, and then the Pico and the service engage in a multi-channel cryptographic authentication protocol. There is no password to guess, eavesdrop, shoulder surf, keylog, and so forth. And most importantly, there aren't any secrets that you must remember. Now, Pico certainly isn't the first authentication system to be built around a physical token. But what happens when other tokens are lost or stolen? Maybe the bad guy gets the same access rights as you. That's what happens when you lose your car keys. Or maybe the token is protected by a PIN, as happens with a modern bank card. But then you still have to remember a secret, and we know we are not very good at that. So, as a design goal, I want a Pico to lock up and stop working completely whenever it's not in your possession. The Pico unlocks when it finds itself within an aura of safety around you, which is created by the presence of smaller devices that you have on your person and you are less likely to take off, like your glasses, your watch or your shoes. They can be on your keyring, in your wallet, embedded in your clothes, embedded in your jewellery, they could even be subcutaneous implants. You'll carry these tiny devices without really thinking about them. We call them Pico siblings, and when enough of them are nearby, the Pico feels comfortable and unlocks. Keeping the Pico unlocked may also require regular refreshing with a personal biometric check and with a connection to a remote server. So even if the thief gets hold of Pico and Pico siblings, you can still lock your Pico remotely. The docking station will back up the Pico at every recharge so that if you do lose your Pico down the drain, you can just buy yourself a blank new one, restore your backup, and carry on. Another security advantage of Pico is what we call continuous authentication. This means that uh, when you're no longer close to the computer on which you authenticated, it will lock the session automatically, and it will only reopen it when you actually get back there. 
to get the equivalent protection with passwords, you'd have to keep retyping them several times per minute and imagine how much fun that would be. Pico, however, is not backwards compatible and replacing passwords is going to be extremely difficult. However, the situation with passwords in coming years is only going to get worse, both for users who will face more and more passwords to remember, and for service providers whose costs will go up both because of security incidents to do with passwords and for supporting customers with their password problems. So with the Pico project we are going for a long-term solution. At some point the world will have had enough of passwords and by then we'll be ready with a more usable and a more secure alternative. We are producing a reference implementation and that will be validated by several rounds of prototyping, trials with service providers and lots of user studies. I have been generously funded by the European Research Council to fix this password problem and so to encourage universal adoption I have already pledged that the PICO will be completely open and free for anyone to adopt and implement at no charge. So, if you too are interested in a future without passwords, why not visit our website to find out more?